Okay, welcome back to another episode. Um, today we are looking at Ariel from Good Smile Company. And uh, in short, Ariel, Arialu, which stands for All Around Intercept and Escort Lady, is a mecha and not a human kit. And she comes from Yuichi Sasamoto's sci fi novel, Ariel. It's a plastic model of the main mecha, Ariel, of course, with her sword and shield in her C type equipment. So it features runners separated into five colors. All it takes is simple assembly to create a displayable model and the translucent parts you can see here on the hair have a really nice effect, I think. So the set includes Ariel, her sword, her shield, two varieties of her hair, her helmet, a special stand and decals. Materials are mostly PS and ABS with POM used for some joints and PVC used for her wrists. The novel story arc is quite simple. Aliens have invaded Earth to claim it for the corporation they work for. So to save the Earth, a scientist, Dr. Kishida, creates the ultimate feminine fighting robot. There is one issue, Ariel needs a pilot. And unfortunately, Kishida's granddaughters refuse to do so. This rather selfish bunch have got more important things to do than becoming teenage superheroes. So basically the doctor has to persuade his waste granddaughters to do the right thing and pilot what you see in front of you now. So yes, it's a mecha, it's not meant to be a human. And, well, have a look at it. I think it's quite, quite elegant. It poses really well. She stands up on her own, um, if you pose it right, and just has that type of, ah, oh, I don't know, it's, it's got this feeling. It's got a very type of beautiful, calm vibe to it. Obviously that's to do with the hair I've chosen in this part because, you know, that looks a bit more feminine. But then she does have a, a pigtail and also she's got her helmet form. Anyway, here's what's included in the kit once it's fully built. So you've got the instruction manual and also this. Now this is important because I didn't realise what it was at the start. Well, I just ignored it. But on the left you've got the wrong instructions. On the right you've got the correct instructions. Now this is really important because these are the right ones here, but it's for the pegs of the hands. Now, the first ones on the left that I used are made of a softer plastic, and guess what? They broke when I tried to use them, and that is why they've told you to replace them. So make sure you use the right hand side and not the left. Inside the instruction manual, you've got obviously where you put the decals, um, and just, you know, this is the same as what the kit I did before by Good Smile. It's, you know, very well laid out colourful, easy to understand. So yeah, I do like their way of doing things. So as you can see, I've put a few decals on her and I didn't do any much other painting. She has this, this one head with the nice hair at the back, but she also has the helmet. Now the helmet is really cool. You've got that orange clear plastic. You can see our eyes through it. But for the time being, I've got her in this pose with the clear hair. Just think you can see more of her the head. As far as pos posability is concerned, yes, you, you can move her shoulder guards and her arms. Now, the peg here, as you can see, is just, it only goes up and down, doesn't go sideways. So you have to use the corner of the arm. Um, for changing the head, as I showed you before, you just pop that first bit off and slot this in. It's very simple, very easy. So you've got two different ways of posing this front bit with the bangs and obviously the other one's a side piece by itself, the helmet. Now let's look at the accessories. So here we have the sword. I like the sword, it's just simple. One piece, you don't have to put it together, just cut it out. Um, that's it, it's done. Make sure you file down the nub marks. Here is the shield. Now the shield you have as you can see, the bit that you, she holds onto, but for extra stability, there's type of a claw that hooks around the upper arm, keeps that very, very stable. I really like that. And I added the decals. I'll show you a bit more of that at the end of the film. The only, only other bit of three parts that you stick on the back. So that's that, the shield. Now I've been saying about this a lot, but uh, just once again, there's the pigtail that you can put into this other piece in the middle and the helmet. And there's the helmet. I put decals on the front, it's quite cool. Um, oh, and the big pigtail will fit into the back of that. There's the pigtail. And it goes into that little hole at the back. And you've got extra faces. Now, I haven't used them because these uh, require you putting on 
decals to the eyes, but the blank ones there, that's here's the decals. Um, so you get a good good range. She comes with the human eyes and the type of weirder eyes, but and the simple stand is effective. It's not. It's just what it is. Okay. So for more posability of the lower half, knee joints just go up and down, and to turn them left and right, you've got to do it from the hip. But the hip is quite good at doing that. Um, toes. That's the only bit there that you can actually flex. It's just the front bit. Everything else is static. There was the knees. And yeah, she'll kneel, she'll do a lot of things. And this is where your main range of motion will come from, the uh, hip joint can go quite far up. But from what I'm quite impressed, not, meant, not much stuff pops off. So that's the best thing. Oh, and you can do the cross leg things like you could do in the last kit I did. Um, and just a simple pin here for the, just a simple pin here for the midriff, just up and down a little bit. She's got the uh, hole in the back for putting it into that stand, but you don't always need it. The shield is almost as big as her. So when you pose her, it really does cover her whole body. And here's just a simple thing of me putting together just the accessories, just that. So very fast. There's the sword. As I said, it was just one piece. Uh, all you need to do is put three bits onto the back of that shield and you're done. These bits actually on the side were quite hard to put on. Um, you've got to really make sure you take all the nub marks off, otherwise it won't go on properly. And the stand is only like four pieces, I think. Just make sure you take the nub marks off to make it look a bit more professional. There you go, done. Boom. Very simple. Okay, now for a bit of uh, touch up. So all you have to do is cut these bits out, dip them in a bit of water. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Now I'm going to do the top shield bit. I've already done some of them, but here we go. Scrape it off. Be very careful not to rip it. I use my finger here to type of sandwich it on. And then don't be afraid of just putting it on and at a weird angle because the great thing about these water ones is that you can uh, you can alter them afterwards. So it's very cool. Like I do here, you can see me moving it around on the on the knee. This one was for her other knee. Readjusting, readjusting. And all you need to do is leave them there and it just dries on. So that is the review of the Modoroid Aerial C-Type. I hope you enjoyed watching. And I will leave you with this elegant pose for looking off into the distance. Thanks for watching. See you again next time. Goodbye.